So welcome to our third episode. Right now you're done with the calibration and you're ready to go scanning. And um, to demonstrate you the different capabilities of an IronScan Pro HD, I brought you here a triple clamp from a Honda CR500R, a old two-stroke uh, engine motocross bike that is rare and today quite popular again. So let's start right away with the technical scan of the triple clamp from the CR500. And um, as some kind of auxiliary part, I'm going to use this simple turntable to scan it faster. I'm going to use that roll of black tape. And I'm not going to marker. Um, the object directly because I'm I got to admit I'm a bit lazy of peeling off the markers again from the object itself and uh, to avoid that I'm going to use environmental markers how I how I call it and environmental markers that means I'm going to apply markers inside a scan field that the scanner still can see but that will not be on the object so I'm using a part of of the scanner scan field I'm using for tracking purpose that means you will see that very fast that this part is just scanning the turntable the produced result will not be part of the scan result that I want and um, to do so, I'm just gluing the markers on the turntable. The topic is why I'm applying much more markers here in this case is that environmental markers will be covered by the object later on. In this case, I'm just, uh, let's say, benefiting from having more markers that uh, are visible at the same time. And as I'm reusing the turntable, I'm, I'm not, let's say, doing this just for this example. I can reuse my, my work many times. Something I really don't recommend you to try is to spare markers by by applying um, a full sheet of markers on the turntable so for example you could put that on the turntable put your object on and try to scan it the problem is like I explained before that these markers they are like um, working like a stars in the, in the sky for the sailors the orientation is done by their unique position and there is no unique position just maybe here there is some missing markers so you could take out some of them but anyway that scanner will always try to arrange that marker field in many possible ways and this will screw up your scan so don't do it as well be very careful in uh, leaving marker sheets beside your scan using a turntable for example it can happen that you are scanning a part of the marker field that will make your scanner screw around because it's a matrix that's totally let's say symmetric and there is changing field of view on the markers from the table sometimes you are let's say in a hurry you want to scan all, all the things very fast and you are applying the markers and you leave a sheet of markers beside your scanning area and it will make you a lot of headache and you will maybe not immediately understand why you don't need that headache so why i'm using this roll of tape is quite easy to explain I'm using it as a distance holder. I'm just putting that triple clamp on it. And with this, I have an easier job. Um, I have an easier job 
cutting of the let's say base plane just be sure that there is not too much movement by touching your scanner object because it will make your object bigger in the result because of the offset of the surfaces that will happen by moving as well be really careful of something like this doesn't happen and if you are not sure you can apply a second roll of tape maybe in this case I will take a bigger one or a second one or if, if you are not comfortable just won't have the maximum of preciseness just leave it on, on your Lazy Susan directly and it will be fine so in this case I'm going to take a bigger roll of tape yeah at least it's much better than before so I'm going to start a scan I open my my scanner software like I did before for the calibration you already calibrated you're good to go normally in let's say not temperature compensated scanners like an HX or an H I highly recommend it um, to make the recalibration and environmental temperature changes from about let's say 20 degrees um, in the case of the Pro HD I'm absolutely fine let's say doing this from time to time and um, you will see that as well in the results not let's say generating too much scanning surface but it's just something you do uh, from time to time normally inside that housing because of the fan working temperatures doesn't change so much okay so this is let's say some really helpful guide that you can use uh, for scanning actually I don't use it I'm going to show you that in real life so you will have the comparison between the screen and as well the real world object in uh, the camera I'm just going to turn it off I'm just going to start a new project because I didn't scan anything like this before and um, I'm going to create a Pro HD working folder I'm going to make a new folder for the triple clamp and just think of that um, saving and structure in the Einscan software not like in a Windows normal software application that means you are working like with a data bank that scan software automatically archivates all your scan raw data scan on your PC after um, pushing the stop button then it will be transferred to a hard drive and if you would close the software not saving any additional things it will be there reopening your project anyway it as well uh, is valid for the topic of generating like uh, revisions of your scan that means you might want to have a revision of your scan just save it and then save another revision with different views or so and afterwards decide which one you want to use this might not work like that because the, if you go on the save like or a save uh, as button in this case it will be saved as a point cloud it means you will be having trouble opening it up again and the structure as well of the different views that are named in the Einscan software um, a bit different but the structure will be lost and you will not be able to administrate it like you would expect to be administrating that so try to think of it as a folder structure so if you did a raw scan at a customer's place or uh, you just finished some views and you want to be 100% sure that you will keep everything that you have you can copy the whole folder and it will be fine I normally uh, don't doubt that the software will work fine I just at the end of the customer raw data project before I start post processing I do a safety backup copy um, for myself that means in the case that I'm kicking out some areas that I want to use later on and uh, it was by accident I can just from that backup folder I can just get as well 
the views that I want, just the single views, and I will be fine. So I have, the, let's say, the initial state mm, for the rework uh, always untouched. And if there is, let's say, a breakdown of a hard disk or something happening as well, I'm absolutely fine. So, nevertheless, let's start to work. For the first scan, I will use the rapid scan mode. The rapid scan mode is compared to the handheld HD scan and the fixed scan mode that offers the less uh, resolution. Don't mix up resolution with accuracy, global accuracy. That's something totally different and it's mixed up many times. Resolution, that is what we have to define starting the scan quite at the beginning. So you select your mode that you want. I'm just scanning a new project. I will use an existing folder that's named Triple Clamp. And uh, I will select my resolution here. Resolution um, of 0 0.5 is not necessarily means he's just measuring half a millimeter distance. Uh, it is some value you have to interpret by some experience and it's a bit different regarding the quality of your scanner. You can buy a very cheap scanner that offers you a resolution of 0 0.1 but the real resolution will be much worse. In this case, for a part in the size of something about 30 centimeters, resolution of 0 0.5 is fine. Could be 0 0.3 but I don't mind for, for the geometry I'm seeing here it's absolutely fine. And what is resolution? Resolution is as easy as you know it from photography. Resolution means the possible details you will be able um, to realize in the result. That means in a photo, to make that analogy, a good resolution makes you able to see hair inside the face of a photograph person, for example. That means details that are in this photo and it's the same for for the scan if you are scanning with a high resolution you will see small scratches small casting marks things like that that doesn't mean that a scan is necessarily very accurate i can link a uh, video that i did on uh, structured light scanners where you see the problems that you can still have that means scan results that will be for example, in itself deformed or that they will have uh, not accurate dimensional accuracy, something like this. So this still can happen and you have no influence on this by adjusting the resolution. So some people think, oh, if I'm turning up the resolution to the maximum, I get a more precise scan. The only thing that you will get is more data. For example, from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25, you're doubling the amount of data regarding the surface that you're going to scan. And depending on hardware, it can make your life a bit, let's say, annoying by waiting for your PC. Or it can even lead to results that will not be possible to be calculated if you put it to an extreme. In the rapid scan mode, it's not possible to create big arrows on this part, but just to mention it, don't mix up resolution with accuracy. Many people think about global accuracy that is uh, normally in the scanner specs defined by a value of some 0 0.03 millimeters per meter. Means Per meter means you have an arrow that's accumulating, adding the scan fields to scan an object that's much bigger than your scan field, your single scan field. After defining the resolution, I can as well um, use different tracking modes. In this case, I have the options hybrid, it means use markers if they are environmental markers around the object. Features is just using the geometry to, to orientate the following scan information. That will be leading to problems if you have very, let's say, technical uh, surfaces that have not much curvature change. It means that are all curved totally, uh, let's say, constant like a ball. If you imagine a white ball trying to scan it with a scanner, 
how the scanner could imagine where on this ball he is. If you put on, for example, um, not a, just a white ball, you could use a globe where the countries and the continents are visible. You already have some information. You have already some information about where is your orientation, where you are situated in this case. I could use it even in scanning, in this case, just in textured mode. I could use the texture for the information, the tracking information, to help the scanner show where he is right now and relate each scan frame that he's shooting. He's shooting picture per picture that are like um, shells that match in together. And by the texture information, you can over the texture on the surface, like on a globe that you have from, uh, let's say, your school, you can tell him where he is, even if the coverage is totally constant. As we are going technical, I'm not using this. I could use hybrid because there is some geometry information or just markers. And I just like to work with markers because hybrid can already, uh, let's say, lead to some tracking errors. It's good in this in the scanner. Um, I just, let's say, I like it better like that because I'm used to, but it will work hybrid as well in this case. So let's start. And you will see after starting your project that there is no information. Like I told you, this computer doesn't know over the scanner where he is right now. So if I will start the scanner, I'm not directly start scanning. There is as well some information that I'm in preview mode right now. Preview mode says you see what the scanner would see in this orientation, but if I put it away, nothing of this information is staying. So he's, let's say, not keeping it. It's just preview of the depth sensor. What is the scanner actually is? He's measuring the depth in a field, and this is what he is recognizing. And I have here on the left side some bar that is evaluating the distance to the object. In some brands, this is a histogram, so you see um, not just one overall value, how far you are or how near you to the object regarding your scanner. You see if I go very close, it's red and he's losing uh, his in information to track, so he's, let's say, complaining. And it will happen something, if I go too far away, I'm in the blue area, and it's happening the same. And here, where it's green, I'm in the sweet spot of that scanner where he's working fine. Just before scanning I can find adjust the brightness. That makes it possible to scan more or less of that surface. If I put the brightness to zero, the sensitivity of the camera is very low. That means not a lot of the light will be captured. And um, it as well has the advantage that there is no, let's say, environmental information so much captured. I will not see anything of that turntable plate. If I go the opposite way, I'm over brightening, so he does not see any contrast. It's like looking into the sun or have a very, very shiny surface for your eyes. This is for the scanner if you over brighten the picture. And if it's a lot of red areas that tells you don't do that. So going back, I tend to have small red areas on the surfaces that I want to scan. Not caring about surfaces in the environment because they are not important to me. I just want to capture the triple clamp and here I have a little small red spots. If I go a bit down it doesn't help so much. If you are good you will see it as well. Not moving the scanner at all by how much of the surface you will recognize in this case of turning it upside down. But it's quite fine I guess. We could start like that. I could I could be fine with this, what we have right now. And starting to scan right now, always make sure that you are staying with the distance in the right level. That means in the green area, it's the best. And if you st make sure that you see at least five or more marker points. That means he knows where he is. And right now, he's putting down the information numerically that he sees from the object what you can see is your aggregated result. That is the amount of points that you captured of the object. Just don't try to shape the object too much. 
or make a very stable um, connection to the turntable to make sure that you're not making the scan inaccurate. Okay, so you see not much time and you already created your first view of the object. It looks quite fine to me, taking in consideration that there will be applied filters to the next steps till I will mesh the object. Right now it seems like an object. Many people mix that up. They say, why can't I save it as a step or something that like surface? Because it looks like a surface. Some people think they can, but if you scroll into the result, you see it's, it's points. It's points and the distance means, let's say, the point distance by resolution that you put on the parameters before starting the scan. For me it's fine. I can not scan much more of that object that is useful to me. Because light is not passing through the object, I cannot see behind it. It's using light, so everything that is covered up, it's not possible to be scanned in this case. So I will have to do more views. It's like um, getting a perspective of a whole thing by using more orientations and that's exactly what I'm going to do. To do so, I'm going to do a new project group. This is the, the word that in the software is used for new view. I'm not changing anything in the parameters. I shouldn't as well. And I can right now start a new view. The good and the bad thing in itself is that you will lose all this memory about the last view that you scanned. That means as well marker positions. On the other hand, it makes possible to scan a new orientation without having the old orientation as a result in what you scan right now. That would be wrong because I would see two triple clamps continuing to use that project group that I had before. One would be laying like before and this one would be up and they will be as a sum in the result what I don't want because I want to have one triple clamp from all orientations. Okay, that's enough I think for theory. I'm just going to scan the next view. And with the uh, turntable I can just use some comfortable position that is more or less in the green distance but I'm not filming too much of my hand and just make small changes of the angle turning, turning the object and here you see we have some difficult to reach areas that are created by rips uh, again that light isn't capable to go behind rigid objects so you will have to use your hand to create different views on the object and you will have to make sure if you're not using markers on the object that you always will have some of the environmental markers visible in your scan field that means as well experiment a little bit how I can capture the areas uh, how I can get the covered areas best way you will experience that it makes a big difference if you are using the scanner in the upright or in the horizontal position it makes a difference uh, regarding the visible markers um, for for this kind of the usage and um, in this case I'm fine I think I can stop the view and um, you will have to have the whole object scanned in your views with an overlapping. That means the different surfaces will have to make a close the volume and to be able to close the volume you need overlapping because the software doesn't know if you keep distance between the different views and they are not connected where 
to put them in relation to each other. So make sure that if you do a new view to the last view you did, there is an overlapping of the result. So for this part I will use three views. I think three will be fine. Maybe I need a fourth one to come deeper into these casting ribs. Let's see. The process is the same, you already know it. One thing you could do is just clean up the areas that you don't want to have inside your scan before you push the stop button. Stop button will transfer all your scan information of the current view to your hard external and to your project. The topic is in this software version I invented some problems doing the cleaning up of the view without pushing the stop button um, trying after all to align all the results. There was some problem so normally you can do that it's a quite common workflow. In this case there was some bug I'm, I'm sure that it will be fixed quite fast uh, as we report them. But in this case I just will clean up the scan results after I push the stop button, I have here the overview of my different scan views. I can show and unshow them, so I know what I what I created as information. And um, that's basically it for creating scan views. So we are going to clean up the scan results. Um, in this case, to just keep what we want to have. From the result, I'm using here a polygon tool. A polygon tool pushing the shift button makes it possible if you, of course, select your scan view that you did, it makes it possible to mark and unmark by, for example, keep uh, control pushed and mark the same area. I can unmark it. it, makes it possible to select and deselect different areas of my point cloud because it's not a mesh right now, it's just a point cloud. And this makes it possible using boolean logic that means select what I want and what I don't want now you can even make errors I can in this case just select what I want to keep if I would push the delete button right now he would delete what is, is in this case is, is marked but I'm going to invert that I could as well delete this one here. I can as well use a lasso tool. Or I can as well unmark it with the lasso tool. It doesn't matter. It's the same for the paintbrush. You know it from paint software in Microsoft or Apple, whatever you use. And I'm going to delete the first part of what I don't want. And right now I'm doing the details, just cutting out. The tape roll that I used for keeping the distance should be fine what I kept right now. Um, next thing for the next scan view. There's some small pieces, floating uh, leftovers that I will use the filter for later on. Yeah, I will show you. I will keep and of course show you that. This is not necessarily something you have to delete. In this case, you can just cut away a little bit of the area of interest. But it doesn't matter. This is inside the overlapping. Don't forget to select your view.
Okay, well now I extracted from the three views that are already created the important information. I have enough overlapping for superposition, the results so far, and I'm using here the puzzle button to start it, the alignment. And um, you can look on my videos from Dynasty and IHX. I did more explanation there for, for this, what I'm doing right now. This is the alignment of different views. Um, it's the same like in, in the Einstein H software, you first use your part that it's not going to be moved. You then use your part that is that want to you want to be connected to the first one. And this will be moved to fit into the first one. And I'm doing alignment by feature, that means the results of the two uh, surfaces will be over the geometry. Uh, superposition. So the software tries to find a position where they are having the best possible overlapping. And actually, the shiny software is doing that quite well. I think something about 85%. This is working fine. And this is one of those cases you see right now. There is a good result. The overlapping is fine. If you have a bad scanner, you might have that result coming out of the surface so they are for example deformed both scans have deformations they can have different reasons i will speak about it later on in a different video but it means that they will have some surfaces that are not capable of being put together um, in the overlapping because the scan is deformed in itself it's like if you have sheet metal uh, pieces that together give as a 3d puzzle give you a shape, if the uh, sheet metal is deformed, you will not be able to create a watertight volume. And that's exactly what's happening in the case of an, a not good scan quality and a deformed scan. So third thing is the same, he did a group from the first two scans. Um, and uh, right now the third scan is the last one I didn't align, it's just the same. Just click the button and here we are. And you see the result is quite fine. I can right now search for areas that are not completely scanned. And if there are bigger open areas that I want to have as information, I can make an additional view just of that area. For example, if there would be a thread hole, I wouldn't want to have more information from the thread hole. Um, I would just make a scan of the thread hole and merge it inside the overall result. That means I spare a bit of time. I can make a, some kind of in-between stand right now to check how far I succeeded to create a volume. And I'm quite fine with this in this case. As I told you, if you want to know about the other alignment methods, um, you will find it in my Einscan HX video. And I'm going to show it again in one of the next examples of the same Pro HD alignment function, but for example for the HD scan. So <coughs> this was just one of the simplest scans that you could create. And you want right now to create a volume and actually you want to have a mesh. That means right now we are looking at point clouds that are superpositioned. But point clouds are no volume, as points are not creating some surface that can differ inside from outside. And that's what's happening in meshing, actually. I'm just in between points that I have here. I'm going to delete the points that are too much. And the software is afterwards creating triangles, connecting three points to a triangle by a surface. And that's actually what you will receive as SPL mesh. And therefore, I click on this mesh button. Right now, you see the result without any filters. I explained the filters as well on the Einscan HX videos. Just what is important right here is just you can select unwatertight or watertight. Watertight will, let's say, close the areas where there is no scanning information to create and close the volume. That means here I have some missing scan information and he will just close it by the correlation points that he puts in the area where he thinks they are best. 
and water type will just merge the surface that you scan and will open or leave open the areas that you didn't scan not to create the impression that there is something that there wasn't but for example if you want to 3d print that part or do something else you need a, a closed mesh it's absolutely fine sometimes to accept this interpolation okay so i can select water type here i have the quality filters for me medium quality is absolutely fine this have the most impact on the resolution that will be affected will be there i can smoothen the surface that will filter up some small arrows that can result out of mirroring surfaces or anything i can remove small floating parts by size that means the small parts you can do that later on anyway as well and i can limit the amount of triangle what is implicating the size that it will have in the end spikes are as well surface uh, artifacts that are created by physical problems scanning filling up marker holes that if you would have had markers on your surface of your object of course he cannot scan what's below the marker so he's leaving that markers cut out that means there is holes in all the areas where there is markers and I can say close them as I work just with environmental markers I don't have to so it doesn't make any difference if you just play around to check and test your your setup that you want to know filters influence and so on you can always by clicking and clicking again on recommend parameters go back to what the software is recommendations like in in the first state when for example installing so you can just undo everything that you did before without having any problems and uh, you can always go back like that I just leave it default because here's nothing really special to be regarded and in many cases the default setup will be absolutely fine for you and uh, right now you see your resolve value volume and I think for reverse engineering credit surfaces on the triple plan it would be absolutely fine I can undo that if I don't like the result and want to apply different filters or I can confirm if I'm fine with it. I have still some kind of post-processing. Again, I'm going to refer on the Einscan HX videos about um, mesh remeshing, rash mesh treatment um, and merging. There you will find uh, all the information and links below in the, the show notes. Just here in this case I'm going to delete that small object and I'm going to do a, a simplification. Remove floating objects. I can use a quite big value here. And uh, afterwards I can confirm if I like it. If I delete too much that I didn't want to delete I can choose a different value. Simplification is a process that will reduce the amount of memory that it's used by throwing out additional points in areas where there is no points needed. What does it mean? If you have a very rough surface with a lot of details, you need a lot of points to capture the information because if there is no point, there is just nothing visible. And uh, if you go here on simplification, the software will first try to throw out all the points curvature based. That means if you have a flat surface, he will throw out most of the, of the points there and in the radius he will keep more points. And uh, this is something you can play around a little bit. Unfortunately, it's not possible to select the value that you admit the software to create an error on the surface. It means from before and after. But you can just check it by create a, a higher simplification. And when you start to see, uh, let's say, the triangles on the surface, that means round areas will get a little bit sharp and show, let's say, uh, digitalization effects, then you're going too far. That's the quick and dirty way how to judge it. In this case, I go here to this value and I see 
that maybe 67% of simplification was a bit too much. You see round areas are showing right now long and ugly triangles. Here you see there is just three points here and this is creating a big triangle that is not really leaving a nice shape. So I'm just going to a smaller value. See if this is better. Just like, of course I can go back to what I had before. And apply some 22% of the simplification. What will create an STL file of 10 megabytes? What is not really like much bigger than a normal photo on your mobile phone? So that's absolutely fine. I can confirm it. Post filling, I think, is speaking for itself. And uh, as well, manual holes filling that means uh, in a not watertight model, just select some areas that you want to close. Look at HX videos, it's the same. We're just going to repeat most important things in the next scanning steps. Okay, so you finally created your, your model. You can use some reverse engineering software right now to work on it. And I can share it over the web, I just don't want to do that on the Shining page. You can, or it's actually Sketchfab where you can uh, share your model. Uh, I can directly send it to a third party software if I have some Geomagic or Solid Edge installed. Very surf, there is direct connections for transfer. I'm just going to save that one. And um, I'm normally um, just doing, let's say, uh, saving since some export folder. And you can choose the quite common uh, formats for mesh, saving it as point .sc, .sc. Sorry. Saving it as point S ASC is, let's say, saving uh, a point cloud. I guess it's not a mesh that you will receive. And uh, for me, it's fine. I can put here a scaling ratio. I'm not sure if this is really needed. If you are creating a part that you want to use for casting and you will have some shrinkage to be regarded, you could do it here. But you don't need it in this case. And this will be my result. I can open up in my reverse engineering software. And you see it didn't take me much more than two to three minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, depending on your skill level to create a scan of a triple count. That's quite cool, I think. So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we are going to do an HD scan and a texture scan. See you there.